Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so this presentation is going to be about uh, cryptocurrency and blockchains uh, and how blockchain technology can be applied in the uh, gaming industry. Uh, so I have a couple of free extract concepts, uh, and that's why I was so keen in opening the presentation. Um, uh, yeah, so my name is Salas, uh, I'm coming from a uh, game development company and we create betting games uh, and then we integrate blockchain inside these games so we can provide uh, more uh, like transparency and better uh, gameplay for final users. So uh, just to start the topic, I would like to give like a short interview where the current uh, state of the blockchain is uh, when it comes to smart contracts uh, and transparency. Uh, well, yes, most of you already heard like about ICOs, uh, about like other kind of projects, exchanges, cryptocurrency trading. Uh, but the thing is that uh, most ICOs they are not really functioning, uh, and uh, they you know they, they raise a lot of capital and they have a promise to build something fascinating in the upcoming two years. Uh, and the funny thing is that uh, if we take a look at the projects which are functioning today, uh, so 72 out of 100. Uh, top Ethereum projects are uh, betting related or games related. So it seems like, uh, like betting and games industry was really fast uh, in adaptation of uh, this technology. Um, yeah, before I dive deeper, I would like to uh, maybe like give um, like a short explanation how the system functions, and it doesn't really require like much uh, technical knowledge. So um, to illustrate the thing. Um, Imagine you're trying to create like a classic roulette game and you want to launch it in cyber market or like in other kind of different market. Uh, so first step, what do you do? Uh, you hire a developer um, and then this developer writes uh, a code which defines your uh, logic of your roulette game. Um, and then the next step is uh, you take the code and then you upload it uh, on the server. So in a lot of cases the server is coming from Amazon or a different provider. And uh, in the end of the day, uh, you know, your developer uploads your code in your centralized server. Uh, and then you host it on the website, uh, and then once you attract traffic, user goes to your website. Uh, and then on the back end, his uh, device is directly connected to the server where your code is laying in. Um, and that's a direct connection. Um, and uh, now let's imagine that you want to create a blockchain-based roulette. So what do you do? You hire a developer. Uh, a developer writes code. Uh, so in this industry, uh, usually like, codes which are being uploaded on the blockchain are referred as smart contracts. Uh, but in the end of the day, it's uh, the same programming code which defines the logic of the game. Uh, and then instead of uploading code to the server, you upload it on distributed network of servers. And usually this network is usually referred as distributed ledger or a blockchain. And um, yeah, and in the other dates, it's the same program code, just uh, you upload it on a different location. So instead of uploading it on the server, you upload it on a distributed network of servers. Uh, and then you give access to the final user. And then the user goes to your website, and then the code execution happens from a uh, distributed ledger. Um, so yeah, so that's the one difference. Um, and uh, this difference is quite unique, uh, because distributed, distributed ledger has many servers connected in a giant network. Uh, and uh, it's like millions of computers connected into one network and they have uh, tons of processing power. Uh, so currently uh, the blockchain network, uh, we can say it's the uh, most powerful supercomputer which uh, exists today. Um, and the way it works, uh, when you upload the code, so that means every uh, server which is connected on the blockchain has a 100% pure copy of your game's code. Uh, so that means every you know, every, every, every person who wants to connect uh, to the blockchain, they need to download the node, uh, and the node already has uh, a copy of your game. Um, and then, uh, yeah, usually uh, these uh, mm, like uh, clusters are called nodes, uh, but yeah, but in the end of the day, uh, we can refer it as, as like a separate server owned by an individual. Uh, and that's uh, what these miners are doing. So they're buying the processing power and they're connecting their computers to the network. So the more miners we have, the uh, larger processing power we have. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then uh, once a player connects to your game, uh, so system randomly chooses a server and then this server executes code. So in this case, uh, if you have like a centralized system, so that means uh, if you host it on Amazon, so Amazon executes your code. And if you host your game on the blockchain network, uh, so miner uh, does execution process. Uh, 
So if you heard about miners and miner fees, so that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, they are executing your code. And the fee, uh, fee is the processing fee. So it's the same fee uh, as you would pay for Amazon. So in this case, uh, you are paying for miner uh, for your game storage and game execution. Um, yeah, another interesting feature is that uh, uh, to make sure that the server, the, uh, the server executes your code, uh, so other uh, servers, they become validators. Uh, and once you launch a game, so the roulette game, and, this, and a miner executes your game, like other servers, they need to validate that this is uh, pure and 100% code which you, which you developed. Um, yeah, and this uh, system gives Three, real, three new features uh, which were not really existing uh, in IT industry. And uh, one of the most notable feature is that uh, since network contains millions of computers, so that means we have millions of Bitcoin miners or Ethereum miners, uh, it becomes impossible to shut down the network uh, because network uh, has uh, you know, computer distribution in almost every country uh, and there is no regular, no company or no government uh, which can easily shut it down. So that means the network became like a part of our you know, society, something as rivers, mountains, it's just, you know, is a part of the society and you can't really do uh, anything about that. Uh, then, uh, once you upload the code, mm, the code becomes transparent. So it's uh, something similar I would compare to, to like foods industry, like a lot of people are interested in what kind of meat they are eating. So they usually dig deeper into the distribution chain and then they ask, uh, is your beef grass-fed or grain-fed? Uh, so here it's pretty much the same. When we have a transparent code, uh, like a final user uh, who uses an application, he can easily see uh, with what, like, what kind of code he's interacting with. Uh, and uh, the last feature, which is really powerful, uh, so the network allows to create digital assets uh, and this was not really possible before too. Uh, and imagine you have a game uh, and you want to create like a bicycle. So this is a game, in, like you have like a role playing game and you have a bicycle and you want to upload it on the game. Uh, so then you create uh, you know, a code for this bicycle, you upload it on the distributed ledger and then the bicycle uh, has unique ID assigned. So let's say your ID starts with DX234, it's just an example and then you have limited amount of bikes. So let's say you have five bikes. Uh, and then once you upload it on the chain, uh, like all servers become validators and they validate the quantity and your unique idea of the bike. So that means it's, it, it becomes impossible to make a copy of your bike. And you have limited amount of specific bikes with a specific uh, ID number. Uh, and that's the same process uh, how any cryptocurrency is created. Uh, technically it's uh, you know, like a number in the Excel sheet that this number has unique ID. Uh, and validators, they uh, make sure that uh, it's impossible to duplicate uh, this uh, Excel sheet. Um, and, uh, and here, using this feature, you can create not only cryptocurrencies, but you can create almost anything. Uh, and for the gaming industry, that means uh, if you're creating uh, like role-playing game, so you can create uh, armor, items, and different assets, which uh, have limited supply. Uh, and people can actually uh, trade these items as they would trade cars or any other item for from uh, real economy. And uh, these uh, uh, three features, they uh, give uh, two main use cases for uh, gaming and betting industry. So the first is uh, what I would say, transparent betting. Uh, so a game which uh, has games uploaded in the blockchain has a really transparent code. And why does it matter? Because uh, betting industry um, does random number generation. So that means when you shuffle cards, uh, on a classical casino, a card shuffle process happens inside the server. Uh, and in a lot of cases, operator has full power to cheat against own players, and especially smaller operators, which uh, you know, have uh, pretty weak business units, uh, they have a strong incentive to cheat uh, against players in order to make more profits. Uh, however, if you have developed games uh, on the blockchain and your code is uploaded, so that means the, process, the processing happens on this real ledger, and the operator uh, cannot influence random number generation. Um, so that means uh, like both player uh, and uh, any participant in the system can have a full trust uh, how random number is being generated. And it gives enormous amount of transparency for games such as lottery, uh, blackjack, roulette, build any game which requires random number generation. 
And also, really important note, but I would like to distinguish um, that an operator which integrates the cryptocurrency uh, has nothing to do with the blockchain. Uh, because a regular operator which operates on centralized server uses cryptocurrency as a payment method. But it doesn't use uh, transparency, smart contracts, or any other features that blockchain uh, provides. Um, so, if you want to use these features, uh, you need to use an operator which uh, has games developed specifically uh, in blockchain programming language, and these games are uploaded on, on blockchain uh, infrastructure. So, only these games can provide transparency element uh, for the final music. Um, and I guess a lot of people who uh, have, like, deal with online betting, um, they have faced a lot of situations where uh, customers, uh, they uh, claim that the casino would be cheap uh, against them, that the card traveling is uh, like, uh, not transparent, then they lose trust in the brand, or, or in some cases they uh, write uh, like a letter to a regulatory commission asking for a refund. Um, however, if you use uh, these kind of games, so then uh, it's not an issue anymore because you have like an actual proof uh, how randomness was generated in your, in your uh, casino. And then uh, second case is digital assets. Uh, and right now I'm going to go through uh, like a really concrete examples of already functioning projects which successfully use these two cases uh, and they become uh, like uh, you know way better products uh, and uh, they can offer much more to customers than. Uh, traditional games or uh, classical casinos. Uh, so first, most notable example would be uh, CryptoKitties, uh, and they utilize this digital game asset concept. So uh, why it became so popular, even though the gameplay is super boring, uh, it's the reason because they were first project which uh, utilized the concept of digital assets. So that means like this kitty which has a price, uh, the kitty, the, the the ID of the kitty is uploaded on the blockchain slash distributed uh, network of servers and, and that means it's impossible to duplicate these kitties so this kitty belongs to me and no government, no like uh, third party organization, no other company not even game developer can take this kitty from me and I have like 100% ownership uh, of that kitty and uh, yeah, this game is uh, pretty much about buying uh, like these uh, kitty assets and then you merge kitties into better kitties and then you sell for a more expensive uh, price. Um, yeah, the second game would be uh, Crypto Wads. Uh, so it's pretty much the similar case as Crypto Kitties, just these Crypto Wads, they can fight each other uh, and that's how they progress. So let's say you purchase uh, like a really expensive Crypto Wad, so probably uh, the price was determined uh, by number of uh, like victories or, or losses the bot had. Um, then uh, we have uh, another interesting project which combines uh, gaming and betting, uh, so it's called First Blood. Um, and so far they provide uh, their services for uh, Dota 2. Uh, so Dota 2 is like a really competitive uh, uh, 5 versus 5, uh, like, a, like a game in MOBA genre. And uh, so right now you can play this game and through their system you can find other opponents who would be interested in doing bets against you. So that means right now you can not only play games, but you can play games and make, uh, let's say, a $50 bet that my team is going to win. And, other, and then it matches with other team uh, which places a bet of uh, $50. Um, and then the main idea is that uh, in this case you're not only playing the game, but once you have a bet made, so your incentive to play it really good, and also the emotions which you can experience once the bet is placed, is way, way much harder. Way much harder. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, like a pretty interesting uh, form of entertainment uh, for people who, you know, they want to escalate their emotions while playing games. Um, then our company, uh, so yeah, so we make this transparent betting, so we create uh, classical casino games which uh, generate randomness, um, and then uh, games are using the blockchain infrastructure, so that means uh, information such as how many deposits, how many withdrawals, uh, what's the size of the bankroll, uh, how the size of the bankroll of the uh, casino is changing is publicly available to every player. Uh, also, the, the, the way we generate randomness is publicly available to the player and the uh, people who are playing uh, on our games, they, uh, they can have full trust in the system uh, that this system is uh, not cheating uh, against players and it helps to improve uh, conversion rates uh, when we want to attract players who you know, lost trust in, in, uh, in, in, in casino brands. Um, 
then the funny thing is, uh, once you have this uh, option to create digital assets, um, and uh, people can you know, uh, take these assets, and then they can trade them. So right now, next to cryptocurrency market, we have a marketplace for digital assets. Uh, and right now, all these games which created uh, crypto kitties, bots, uh, like armors, uh, special cards, limited edition cards, uh, so these items, they're raising in value because uh, more and more people are playing these games and there's even a marketplace where you can trade your kitty to bot uh, or you can trade, you know, like uh, whatever uh, digital asset uh, you can trade. Um, and also what's a funny, thingy, uh, funny thing about assets, uh, these assets become even currency in some cases. Uh, so I guess more, like most people already heard about uh, like Counter-Strike skin betting. Uh, so right now there are more operators which are creating uh, like uh, blockchain asset betting, and then you can bet your kitty, you can bet your robot, or you can bet like any other uh, blockchain asset uh, on the game. And uh, last but not least, uh, so that's uh, an example. The, like all the projects are already functioning, but this one is not launched yet. Uh, but it's kind of worth mentioning because that's a part where things get really weird. Uh, so what they're trying to do, uh, they're building like a virtual city. And they're using the same um, mechanism for digital assets to sell property in the city. So they have created a map which has a fixed amount of land, and each uh, square of the land has unique ID. And also they have a marketplace where they sell this land in the marketplace. Uh, so right now thousands of people uh, are buying land in this virtual city, uh, and then they have full ownership of that land. Uh, and then once the city will be launched, hopefully this year, uh, so then the owners of the land, they will be allowed to build whatever they want uh, on their, you know, uh, purchased uh, area. Uh, so some people are already planning to build, uh, like, shops, uh, other people are uh, planning to build casinos. Uh, also, the virtual city uh, is planning to have its own uh, government's system. So it's going to be, like, separate, mm, separate country uh, with own economy, with own digital assets, uh, operating somewhere in the internet, uh, but in the end of the day, it's run by real people. And uh, yeah, that's why uh, the name of the presentation is then uh, why you know when you have more digital assets, uh, these digital assets can actually compete and participate in the real economy. So I do believe that like in the far future, the city uh, has a great chance, uh, you know, of generating like a decent amount of GDP. Uh, through uh, gambling services, uh, shopping services, or any other kind of service which you can provide uh, in uh, in the realm of virtual reality. Um, yeah, summarizing all this uh, uh, thing. Um, yeah, just just a short summary. Uh, so we will have uh, more operators uh, choosing blockchain infrastructure to provide more concerned games. Um, we will have betting element incorporated not only in uh, the casino games, lotteries, uh, but it's going to be a strong element of uh, any game, like Counter-Strike, Dota 2, uh, or any other shooting game. And it makes sense because it creates a much more engaging uh, gaming experience. Uh, then we will have uh, more marketplaces for uh, digital assets where people will be able to sell not only cryptocurrency, but their uh, like uh, virtual land, uh, their virtual cars, virtual houses, uh, and any other asset in the virtual world. And of course, uh, regulars will have a lot of work because it adds enormous amount of complexity uh, when it comes to regulating these things, uh, especially when you take into consideration that this this kind of system is impossible. Uh, you know, it's impossible to shut it down, and also it becomes possible to uh, regulate or like sue crypto kitty. Uh, owner of the crypto kitty, because in the end, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the crypto kitty owner has a crypto kitty as, uh, as as a cryptocurrency, and you can really send the police uh, to, to to a person and ask, uh, okay, can, can can you send your crypto kitty to to, to, to the governmental institution? So 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 yeah, in the future, uh, like the trend is that regulars will will start regulating, and uh, it might be that they will have a lot of uh, mm, challenges. And I guess it's uh, yeah one of the reasons why uh, United States legalized uh, gambling because uh, right now more operators they have more more tools uh, to overcome any possible regulation, and I guess they realize that if they are not legalizing that, uh, so then uh, you know they will have like, a lot of trouble and operators will operate in the shadow anyway. 
Um, so yeah, that, that was my last note of the station. Thank you very much. My guest tonight has written three best-selling books and his TED Talk on inspiring leadership is...